lesson 2.1, exponents. This is a very, very important lesson because for one, in calculus, in the calculus courses, we use exponent properties all the time, but also this is where I see a lot of mistakes. I've had students that are solid on the calculus concepts, but their mistakes in their work come through properties of exponents. And so this is why this lesson is very important to us. First, let's talk about five properties. And all of these will be A, B, M, N numbers such that the expressions are defined. The first is if you have say A to the M times A to the N, well, we can add here, this is A to the M plus N. We have a product with, this is the same number here, we add the exponents. The second property is when we have a quotient. Let's say we have A to the M divided by A to the N. This would be A to the M minus N. The next one, this says we have a power to a power. Here we multiply. So this would be A to the M times n then there are two more i'll mention one is about a over b all raised to a power well this is a to a power divided by b to the power and similarly if you have a product so a b all to a power we have a to the power and b to the power so these are the properties we have, and we are going to be using them in this lesson. But it's also important to understand an important non-property. I mentioned I see students make mistakes in properties of exponents, and this is one that I see. Um, so for example, we can see it on two different examples here. If you take 1 plus 1 and cubed, well, this is 2 cubed, which is 8. On the other hand, you see one cubed plus one cubed, this is just one plus one, which is two. And we can see right now that eight and two are not equal. And this is one example of this property, but where I see it more is with square roots. So for example, here, we have the square root of three squared plus four squared. This would be the square root of nine plus 16 which is the square root of 25, which is five. That is not equal to, if you just take three plus four or the square root of three squared plus square root of four squared. It's not a property here because you see this is seven and seven is not equal to five. So this is the one I see more often is distributing the square root across a sum, but it's important to understand we cannot do this in mathematics as is illustrated by this example. Here's our first example. We have four things to simplify using properties of exponents. So let's do this first one in a few steps. We have minus two cubed times X to the fourth cubed times X. What I did is I just distributed the, the power of three across this product. Minus two cubed is negative eight. And then we have power to a power we multiply. So this is X to the 12 times X. Remember X is X to the one. So we get our final answer, which is minus eight X to the 13. x to the 8y plus 3 divided by x to the 3y minus 8. Well, we can write this as a single power of x. And this type of thing we will practice in one of the future pages. But you see, this would be 8 to the 8y plus 3 minus the exponent in the denominator, which is 3y minus 8. And we can combine. This is x to the 8y minus 3y um, plus 3. And then we have minus a minus 8, which is plus 8. Altogether, we have 8 to the 5y plus 11. The next problem, we see a product of three terms. My first step in this, let's write as a single 
fraction, but let's group the things that match up. So for example, in my numerator, I have an X cubed because here's an X squared and here's an X. Okay, really this is a over one, so that X squared is in the numerator. The power of Y is just Y to the one. Now I have these two other numbers. I have 15 and I have 49. Now let's group the things that match with those. In my denominator, I have an X cubed. In my denominator, I have a Y squared. And then if you think about this, um, I'm gonna put the three here and the seven here because it will help me cancel because 15 over three is five and 49 over seven is seven. Well, now I'm ready to do this. You see, I have a Y in the denominator. X cubed over X cubed is just one. This part is five and this part is seven. So I have a five up here and I have a seven up here. Altogether, I get 35 divided by Y. This is this expression simplified. And it sure did simplify a lot. It started out super complicated and it is 35 over Y. Last one on this page. Well, I have this negative four power. So that's gonna be the first thing I think about here. The negative four power is going to move what's in the denominator to the numerator with a positive four. So this will be C squared to the positive fourth four power. And then what's in the numerator will get moved to the denominator. Three A B cubed to the positive four. Now let's power to a power, we multiply. At least that's what I do in the numerator. This will be C to the eight. And then I have to do this intermediate step in the denominator of um, three to the fourth times A to the fourth times B cubed to the fourth. One more step, three to the fourth is the same thing as nine times nine, which is 81. So we have C to the eight, we have 81, we have A to the fourth, and b to the power to the power, we multiply, would be b to the 12th power. This is my final answer, or this one. Now let's talk about rational exponents. So far, all I've been doing is working with integer exponents. As a comment, my initial properties here, these will work for rational exponents as well as integer exponents. So the definition of a rational exponent, well, the one over nth power is the nth root. Okay, so square root is one half power, cube root is one third power, for example. And for positive integers, n and m, there's a few ways you can think about this m over nth root. One is that this is x to the m, and then you take the one over nth power, this is also x to the one over n raised to the nth power. And you could check, right? Power to a power, we multiply. Power to a power, we multiply. These are both x to the m over n. So let's use this just to evaluate these six numbers. 25 to the 3 halves power. Because I know the square root of 25, the easiest way to do this is first do the square root of 25 and then cubed. And so we get five cubed, which is 125. This is our answer to this first one. Well, now we want 25 to the minus three halves power. Here we, you see, we've already found 25 to the positive three halves power. So all we need to do here is take one over that because this is a negative exponent. So my answer would be one over 125. nine to the minus one half power. Well, here, one half power is square root. Maybe I will do that here in a step. We have one over the square root. I'll even write it as a square root here of nine. And the square root of nine is three. So this answer is one over three. Minus 32 to the one fifth power. Here we have to think a little bit we have to think, so two to the fifth is 32. 
And so this means 32 to the one fifth is two, but we have a negative. So this would be negative two. And you could check, take negative two, multiply itself five times, or a better way to say it is this, we get negative 32 here, okay? So this was just thinking about exponents. Minus 32 to the two fifths. Well, this follows from the above. The we can take minus 32 to the one fifth and then square. And this would just be negative two squared because we found minus 32 to the one fifth in the problem above. This is four. Last one, negative two to the three halves power. Uh-oh, this is undefined. Let's see, what would be the easiest way to see this? First, we can cube. Then we can take a square root. And minus two cubed is negative eight. We would have the square root of negative eight. And this is undefined, not a real number. We cannot take the square root or even a root of a negative number. And so this answer is undefined. This is our last page uh, where we can use properties of exponents in this lesson. We want to write each expression as a single power of x. Now here, negative exponents are allowed in answers. This step of having something kind of complicated looking of x and writing it as x to a power is an important step you will use in the calculus courses. So let's do this here with all four of these to end our lesson. First, let's write this as x squared over, we have a fourth root, so it's x squared over x to the one fourth. Well, Maybe I'll do this in two steps. X squared is X to the eight over four. Then I have divided by X to the one over four. And what I need to do is just subtract the exponents. This would be X to the eight over four minus one over four, which is X to the seven over four. This is my answer to this first one. Now we have the cube root of X times X to the two fifths. We write the cube root as X to the one third, and this is X to the two fifths. This will be X to the one third plus two fifths. Now I have to add these fractions. So my common denominator here is 15. This is five over 15. And this one is six over 15. And now I have my final answer. This is X to the 11 over 15. Wrote this expression as a single power of X. Two more. Here we have a fraction in the numerator and fraction in the denominator. And how we simplify something like this, well, we take the numerator and then you invert and multiply what's in the denominator. So this would be X to the eight over one. Well, this is X to the eight divided by X cubed. And I can use one more property. This is X to the eight minus three, which is X to the fifth power. So here's my answer to this one. Here's our last one. We want to write X over X squared to the fourth as a single power of X. So let's work inside the parentheses first. X is X to the one. So this quotient is X raised to the one minus two and then to the fourth power, we have X to the minus one to the fourth. Now we have power to a power and we multiply. This is X to the negative four. This is my final answer here. Thank you.